Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. I am, as always, Stashus Maximus, El Kiko, Supremo, with extra cheese, your fellow literature club member, Mr. Kapow. Whoa. Yeah. Time for another session of Doki, Doki Literature Club. So let's get right into it. Love this wholesome dating sim. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Hint, you can use skip button to fast forward through the text you already read. Okay. Good to know, good to know. Let's see. Go with, uh... Hmm. Let's go with... Happiness. And Doki Doki and Eternity. Then we'll go with Hmm Desire. Ooh. Go with Clumsy. Oh not Clumsy. Climax. Yeah. And hmm. Go with romance. And let's see. Rainbows. And shiny. Boop. And hmm. sticky. And captive. Hmm. Massacre. With fickle and broken, as in the broken Matt Hardy. Delete, delete, delete. Yeah, I watch wrestling. You know it. Let's see. Uh, we'll go with extreme. Yeah. Hmm. What else? Uh, tenacious. Hmm. Lust. Yeah. And excitement. And uncontrollable. Graveyard. All right. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Kapow! Yo, sorry. Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm just not used to you being the club after all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come up with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. Eh? Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Wh why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Eh? Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Eh. I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How do you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. Don't be a mooch, folks. Don't be a moocher. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. 
I, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Savage. Oh, I am quite a savage. Uh huh. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't know she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Ah. Uh -huh. I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Capal to let me borrow some money. That's. Don't get me involved in something like that, Yuri. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. That's right. That's right. I know some people who could take that advice to heart. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. You... Ha <laughs> ha! I just really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You are right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. Retribution. That. Still, coming for you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Hee <laughs> hee. Don't let her fool you. Sari knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, but... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Nazuki into making them. Come on. Come on. Give me more credit than that, Sari. Hee <laughs> hee. Thrap. She got hit. <laughs> Yeah. Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my rest restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Ha <laughs> ha! I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Ha <laughs> ha! Nazuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez. Just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So warm! Mmm! Mmm! Sayori suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I burnt my tongue! Hee <laughs> hee! You're going to go. We're going through a lot over just one cookie. Mizuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah! Yours look really good too, Nasuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy you shared this one with me. Hee <laughs> hee. Sari gives out of her seat and goes behind Nasuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookies still in hand, Mizuki reaches up to nut to nudge Sayori off of her. Um Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Mizuki's cookie. Hey! Did you just seriously do that? Mm. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Nazuki glances around. 
Monica isn't in the classroom. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me? Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... Uh-huh. I wouldn't be surprised. She probably... She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Hee <laughs> hee. That's true. Excuse me? Excuse Excuse me! Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry! I'm super sorry! Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or something. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica crisply glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. We'll hold you up anyway. Ah. Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I just kind of lost track of time. Haha. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing the piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you play music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I just started recently. I've always wanted to learn the piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe. Once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool! I'll look forward to it! Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Kapow! Monica smiles sweetly. Uh... I didn't mean to put any pressure or anything like that. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a lot recently. And I really love the chance once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori's mischievous es escapade. I'm sure Nazuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has er already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Nizuki disappeared into the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down in, into the nearest desk. How am I something to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably going to seem really lame to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone that the literature, is, what literature is all about. The problem is, the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So, it's more important to figure out how to get the people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we could do the thing to... We could do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Hmm. I, huh. That's a good point. In that case, do you think Boo will do the trick? 
Well, what kind? Ah, well, I guess we could. Cupcakes! Ha, <laughs> good thinking. Azuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Azuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That was a way you suggested it? Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Dot, dot, dot. Cupcakes it is, then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Suri is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Suri can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I ended up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Ooh. Ah! I open my eyes to find Sari's face filling my vision. I nearly fall out of my chair. Hee <laughs> hee, sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Oh man, a napping club at school would be awesome. I would have so joined a napping club at school. That's my jam, naps. You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in the club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know? Dude, never, there's never, like, anime is life. Weebs of the world, unite. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that out loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's, through, it's true, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sari. Hee hee. It's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh? N not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret! I knew it! Come on! At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sari, it's written all over you. Eh? Sari glances around at herself. How's it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look at your hair. It's sticking out all around here. Ah! Uh -huh. I rub my fingertips down the side of Sari's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My, my hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's much more to you than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's, there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. Try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Oh. Burn! Hey, you meanie. Mm. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sari. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but... You'll thank me later. I start to bun her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh man. Smooth, dude. Smooth as silk. Uh. How you doing, girl? Mm, mm, mm. This is so funny. What is? Well... I was just thinking how weird it would it is to have a friend who does these things kind of things. Eh? Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid baka. It's okay though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Huh. 
I, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? Hee <laughs> hee. It did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner or later that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs are... My, it means my boobs got bigger again. Boobs! Don't say that out loud. Hee <laughs> hee. Anyway, you look so much better now. So... Ah. Why does it feel strange to see Siri's blazer button up like that? Dude, I think you're just going through puberty. But it's so stuffy. Mm. It's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbunts her blazers once more. Phew! That's so much better. Sayori puts her arm around and twirls around. So, if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying like saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. Boy. Yeah. Boy. Get on that. Get on that. Uh uh. Get on that. Uh uh. Get on that. Uh uh. And then you take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. Hee <laughs> hee. I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So, maybe you could come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Kapow! I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I feel around enthusiastic, but Sari still trusts a way to retrieve her poem. Let's see, who should I show my poem to first? Let's give it to Sari. Dot, dot, dot. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Kapow. Eh? I love it. Especially after yesterday's poem. Ugh. You're too honest sometimes, Sari. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Sari, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer after all. I seriously have no idea what I'm doing. Super serial. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. And that actually follows a follows a logic there. She does. Huh. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's option opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Azuki's. Are you sure you didn't like it because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? I think I understand you, though. Okay. So, when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a kapow poem! And that makes it extra special! Like I could feel your feelings in it. Siri hugs a sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Siri. Hee <laughs> hee. 
Well, I'm not good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes you feel things, then it must be a good poem. Not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you do like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm, I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet! Yeah! I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Siri. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes, when you have a little rain crowd cloud in your head, a sad poem could help give the rain cloud a little hug. Oh, that's nice. And make a nice, happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Kapow! I should go write that down, then. Oh, you can read my poem now, okay? <clears throat> Second, folks. <sighs> me, 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 me. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like it's the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. Oh, with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I must put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. In bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging. Scalping and, no, scraping and scraping. It's a long poem. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and in comes my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them off from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the towel between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're out, they're all shouting pleading something but all I hear is echo 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 inside my head holy crap Sari did you really write this of course
course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem after ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be really proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? Hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Sori's always got in the habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, let's, uh... Monica! Hi again, Kapow! How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. As long as it's not going bad. Bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Haha, <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. Dot, dot, dot. All right. I like this one. It makes me feel, makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Uh, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there's also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. Sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So, I think that's the kind of vibe I get when I'm reading your poem. Hmm. You... you sure you're not reading into it too much? Ha! <laughs> it could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Siri's writing has a kind of gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions like happiness and sadness. Who knew someone so happy would enjoy sad things too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. And you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turns out, so I hope you do too. All right. Let's take a look. <sighs> Alright. Save me. The colors. They won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing. Expanding. Piercing. Red. Green. Blue. An endless canopy of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Scene, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a table. Like playing a vinyl on a piece of crust. An endless poem of meaninglessness. Loan me. Okay, that's really weird. The letters the, the are really, really weird. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? Haha, <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said anything like that. It's just the kind of thing I never really seen before, I guess. Kind of like playing with my sp ah, I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can really change the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. Still hard for me to tell what's about, though. Ha! <laughs> ha! 
Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem could be as strapped as a physical expression of a feeling or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. That's true. Save early, save often, folks. You never know when you might change your mind or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What are you talking about? <laughs> that's, that's my advice for the day. Thanks for listening. Okay, Nurse Joy. Let's see, we'll go with... Uh, let's see, go with Yuri. Let's see what you've written for today. Dot, dot, dot. Hmm. Well done, Kapow. You are already approving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh? It's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You'll need to be afraid of a little to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. Mm, girl. Mm. That's certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, hmm, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of, of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and Timothy hands me her poem. <sighs> the raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The entrancing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon implements its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions into the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently. So my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me his excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavilion conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Jazz hands. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I could see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't imagine, begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, 
I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something different uh, that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I usually force to keep to myself. So sometimes I enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Kapow? Well... Well, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we could do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I might be ranting a bit now, but I'm glad you're a good listener. And we'll show finally Nazuki. Hmm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Girl! Then again, if this was as good as your last one, I'll be completely pissed. Well, I guess I want to try something a little different this time. Fair enough, you're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. Come to think of it, this reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh? You really think so? Yeah, well, I guess you've been friends with her so long you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really stuck me as her type. Girl. Sayori has a type... Uh, Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how could someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But, think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. <sighs> Uh, all right. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wiggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard see her sing my favorite song every time she sang the chorus. My heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. One of her friends start to like spiders too. That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world's better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think it was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues Ooh. with much simpler acknowledgement. Jeez. and it helps people recognize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about everyone. It's how everyone thinks my... It doesn't matter. It could be about anything. 
wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something you're afraid if people find out they'll make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Preach it, sister. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Heh, <laughs> that's funny. Yuri wrote something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah? She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I don't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Ooh, it's not like I would judge her or anything. Mizuki has trouble finding words. I, I, I guess I should try not, not to be so mean to her. She feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate people who makes me, me feel insecure. And Yuri makes me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even her, if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in her poem. In your poem. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless it's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one tomorrow, so look forward to it. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poem, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come to the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we could put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last many last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Suri's been already ah, Suri has been working on posters and I've designed some pamphlets we could give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But it doesn't tell us what we're actually gonna be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? P um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let everyone else come and recite poems too. Suri's putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hee <laughs> hee! Sorry. Who's been coloring a poster holds it up for us to see? Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, well, I did. Do you really think that's it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Nisuki. I would never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys... No, Suri. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Mizuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kinda overlooked that. So, I'm sorry dot 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 but I still think we should give it our best we're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club if we start the event and each put in a good performance then it will ins then it will inspire others to do the same and the more people who perform the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about yeah it's about expressing your feelings be intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we, we're all in this club today. 
don't you want to share with that with others? To inspire them to find the feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it's all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. A lot of dots. Nazuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Dot, dot, dot. Looks like Nazuki doesn't have any arguments left. Okay, fine. Guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Suzuki. What about you, Yuri? Dot, dot, dot. Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Ha! <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want to teach... I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well... If you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no! Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Haha, <laughs> of course! Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebooks to a specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <laughs> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is, inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bring the words to life. Is this, is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes a... Ah, let's see. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Siri? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clenches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quietly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You could do it, Yuri! It's... It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she re starts reading the poem. Just a minute ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of her lines, her voice changes. It's almost like it happen what happens when Yuri gets absorbed in her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered even herself. I... 
It's up to me to save this if this uh I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds a poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Dot, dot, dot. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sari hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Aha! Sorry, I giggled. Hee <laughs> hee. Sorry. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see. I see. Okay, then. Suri begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Suri is. is serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Suri's voice almost gives me a new... It gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Suri meant when she says she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Suri finishes and we applaud. I did it. Good job, Suri. Hee <laughs> hee, even Kapow liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? Came out nicely, Suri. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where s that are sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Hee <laughs> hee. The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now, who's next? Nazuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Kapow. It's not like I can compare it with, to you guys anyway. Might as well let Kapow lower everyone's, uh, everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Nazuki. It's fine. It's fine. Might as well get it over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive a applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. It, I think it's less about your uh, abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. It's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Nazuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. <sighs> Nazuki begrudgingly lets out, uh, gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Mizuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude appears, uh, disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Mizuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken out loud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving light to the poem. Nazuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She hugs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. Better not make me do that again. Ah, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put whatever face I want for, for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing 
That's a surprise, Suzuki. I think it would be other be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have to worry... You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for a festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day! Can't wait! I could do this. I could do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Siri and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Suri? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hee <laughs> hee! Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Kapow. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's just go already. I walk home with Suri once more. Even though it's been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Suri is a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Suri. Dot, dot, dot. Sorry! I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Suri fumbles with her words. So, let's just go say that one day Yuri asked to walk... Ah, Yuri asked to... Ah, yeah, yeah. Give me a second, folks. A uh, little lubrication. All right, so let's just say one day Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on a spot here. Hee <laughs> hee. see. Ooh. You know what, I would still walk home with Suri. Suri, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Yeah? But, but, she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I've already seen her in the club every day. Besides, you seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Kapow. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sorry, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure out you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, that's the point in speculating something that never hap going to happen, right? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Suri to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Woo! Alright, folks. I, uh, we're going to end this session here. As always, I am Mr. Kapow. And you can find me all over my social medias. Let's see, there's my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash stuff because, well, I do a lot of stuff. Then you can also, on Twitch, YouTube, and Instagram, just do a search for Mr. Kapow, all one word, M-R-K-A-P-A-O. And you can also follow me on Twitter under at M P. Calamity. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I have a new show on Nerdbot. You can watch it live on the Nerdbot Facebook page. 
It's on every other Wednesdays. It's called Beat the Boss. Me and my co-host, the Kurt Bros. We play your classic arcade beat 'em up games and talk a lot of shit. So it's gonna be a good time. Mm-hmm. So until next time, happy gaming.